Hi there, friend. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in. It's so good to have you with us today. And uh, you'll be very happy if you stay tuned because have one of your favorite guests. As I'm talking to you right now, it's February, and I just kept, I just a few minutes ago was going through the Christmas cards. Now, I had read them all before, but there's something about, you know, a few days later, a few weeks later going through them and how I appreciate, I just got warm, fuzzy feelings from all the nice things that a lot of your cards had to say. And one of them said, Carol King, she meant can't, but said, Carol King is my favorite guest. So you're going to be happy because she's our guest today. And Carol and I want to talk about the situation our country's in. We are well aware that a lot, of, a lot of Americans are really hurting right now. Jobs have been lost. COVID has kept the kids home. And some of the reports from teenagers who can't be in school are really devastating. And so we want you to know that God is still on the throne. He hasn't left and want to encourage you. He will see you through. So um, I know that she's always welcome in your home, and I'm glad she's here today. I'm going to join Stephanie, and I have a confession to make. I usually run the recipes past her because I don't remember what they are. I don't remember what we fixed last week. She said we fixed this one a few months ago, but it was good. We'll do it again. It's pesto chicken mac and cheese. Huh? Doesn't get any better than that. Before I join her, though, and Carol is with us today, I want to, again, as we have for a couple years, offered this book and it's such it's a devotional it's such a bargain and let me suggest I know a friend very close to me who bought several of these keeps them on hand and then when she meets a friend or something or the Holy Spirit can kind of inspire you give it to them what a gift and they are a great great bargain at twenty dollars so you can contact us at box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758 or call 1-800-229-0059. And I think that is such a great, great idea to have two or three of these on hand. Uh, you never know how the Holy Spirit will use them. And that could be true of any really great uh, Christian publication. And here's Stephanie. And Here I am. I beat you to it, though. You did. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say anything. Always. She's kind. <laughs> no, I didn't recognize it. But let me tell you something. We've done over 3,000 recipes. A lot. And yes. uh, she always, she remembers well, but she also could look it right I, up on the I computer faster. I don't remember them all. So Let's I have a quarter cup of butter in here that's heated up already. I'm mm -hmm. going to add five tablespoons of flour. We're going to make a little roux. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to tell you about the milk. Mm -hmm. You take four cups of milk, mm -hmm. and you put it in a pan, and you take a crushed garlic clove, put mm -hmm. it in, boil it, okay? Uh -huh. And so you're infusing the garlic into the milk, mm -hmm. and then you take the garlic clove out. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm going to cook the flour out of this. If you like cheese, this is your recipe. This is it. This has Fontana, Fontina cheese, mozzarella cheese, and Parmesan, Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. So a lot of ingredients today. So I'm just um, going to, you want to just, when you make a roux, you want to cook it for a minute and get that flour mm -hmm. taste out. Okay? Well, also, um, I kept wondering why I don't keep a jar of pesto in the house. I love it. It smells I love it. so uh -huh. good. Okay, I'm going to take this. a nice break from the tomato Yeah, thing. and this milk is heated up, so I'm, yeah. so because we, we need to crank it up because we got yeah. a great guest yeah. to go to, and we don't have 10 minutes for mm -hmm. it, so. That's another thing we have to recognize when we make a recipe. Time. Uh, time issues. Yeah, this time, and a lot of people have time issues anyway. Yep. So we have a half a cup of pesto. Mm -hmm. We bought jarred pesto. Uh -huh. We have five ounces of baby spinach that was frozen that we thawed. Who was telling me this morning of somebody that makes their own pesto? Oh, Were you around? Not me. Wasn't you? Whoa. That? Somebody's mother in law. Oh. Yeah. Someone's mother in law. I Yours? Oh, uh, Michelle. Michelle, her mother-in-law. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Her mother-in-law is a great cook. She, That's Brooke what is I've so heard. Blessed. Yes, yeah. yes. So um, good. Brooke is married to a gentleman who used to work here. Yes, Matthew. So we kind of, kind of all know they a little bit about here. everybody. They fell in love here. They mm -hmm. got married here. But I, I've got to say, let's talk about Brooke a little bit. They were the most circumspect couple I've ever seen. They were falling in love to get married, and you never knew. They just kind of acted like good friends and hung yeah. out. 
It was the sweetest. Very deceitful, actually. Not deceitful. They were sweet. <laughs> they were classy. Yes, that's how you do it. Yeah. Oh, and here's Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> She's behind a mask. Yes. Okay, so Fontina cheese. Oh, there she is. Yeah. We love Brooke. Well, I want to say that we have the greatest people here. We do. I would like to give them all. I, listen. Mm -hmm. I wrote Brooke's mom a letter mm -hmm. at one point, mm -hmm. and I told her how amazing she is. She is. That she raised the best human being, mm -hmm. one of the best human beings I've ever met. Absolutely. I did. I wrote her mom a note. Brooke had no idea. Boy, that would be nice to get, wouldn't mm -hmm. it, as a mother? I'm like, I want you to know, because But I defy mom, anybody to find anything wrong with Brooke. Her mom lives far away. Yes. That's hard. Yeah. That's so hard. You don't know, you know, and I she, wanted her I wanted her her mom to know that she came on Brooke her own is doing the right and thing. She's amazing. She's a wonderful person. Yes. Girl. Okay, so I'm melting the cheese. Mm -hmm. Now Brooke can't walk out of the room because her head is so big. <laughs> <laughs> not really. She's not like that. No. No. Okay, so I'll take um what do I take next? Mm -hmm. Let's do oh salt and pepper. Sorry, I got so excited about Brooke and now I got Surely you can see how Pepper. amazing these ingredients oh, look at are. The oh, cheesy sauce, cheesy sauce. Yeah, we're and this is rotisserie chicken, right? You bought yes. a rotisserie yeah. chicken? Yep. Hey, take a shortcut, okay? Short rotisserie well, chicken is uh, so good. You can get two meals, two or three meals oh, yeah, out yeah, of a rotisserie uh, chicken. The rotisserie chicken, um, there That's was so a lot left over, and uh, so that gives you another meal. Yes. Take shortcuts mm -hmm. or bake a whole bunch of chicken on Sunday and have it for mm -hmm. during the week. Nothing like a rotisserie chicken. Oh, though. I got to hurry, spinach. Okay, we got a minute. Yep. I got oh. the talking and, oi. I think it was a divine order chicken? that we fix this again. Okay. <laughs> Maybe some of our cus uh, customers, some of our viewers our missed customers? it the first time. Yeah. Yes, okay. Let me get some oh of this Oh my goodness. In. Oh, let's just put I it truly, all. I truly have forgotten it, so I'm, That's anxious, okay. I'm anxious to taste it's, it. Look, at it, you know what? This batch is better than the time we made it before. I don't know why, but last time it was really thick. Okay, give me this. because They're going to count us down. We can't even taste it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're being rushed. We will taste it. There we go. There, you go. Yeah, now you, you see that we it's had to so rush good. it. It's so good. It smells so good in here. It's ridiculous. It's so mm. good. It is cheesy goodness. I'm having a moment. Yeah, you mm -hmm. you have a moment. It's cheesy goodness. Mm -hmm. I don't have a moment so on every good. recipe. No. If you want this, information's coming up. You can get the recipe the way you want. It's absolutely free. And if you've never met Carol, I promise you, you're going to love her. So stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, my friend and your friend, if you watch very often, Carol Kent is back. And uh, we realize what we're going through here and, you know, try to imagine what a lot of you are going through. And we really want you to know that uh, we're thinking of you. We're going to be praying for you. There's a lot of sickness. There's people losing jobs. There's financial problems. I have seen on TV like miles of cars waiting for food, and it just breaks my heart. It's mm -hmm. like that shouldn't happen in America. And so Carol and I want to comfort you, and we want to pray for you. Uh, Carol, I. Uh, just briefly, if you haven't seen Carol before, a uh, very accomplished speaker and writer and one and only, your only begotten son, yes. uh, took the life of someone else. There was no question at all, the fault and all, and first degree murder in for life. He's been there 21 years. 21 right? years, yes. But out of that tragedy, a lot of good has happened. And if you've seen this program, really good, you know that. But we're talking about the COVID thing and how mm -hmm. it has just run rough shot rough shot kind of around the world yes and this is a letter from Jason her son who's been in there 21 years and I doubt if anybody maybe except you and people like you would think 
what does COVID have to do with a prison? A lot. A, a lot. lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you have been how long without seeing your son? Seven months without mm -hmm. seeing him. Couldn't and then go. most recently, in the last two months, we've had very restricted measures with mm -hmm. uh, the masks and plastic between us and uh, no games, no noise. food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to communicate. No children visiting their parents uh, unless they're mm -hmm. willing to sit there behind the plastic with doing nothing for three mm -hmm. hours. Well, I want you to think about Jason as I read what he wrote. Um, and he did something horrible. There's, we can't excuse that, but he's been a great blessing for years, teaching and mentoring young men who didn't have a father, uh, very limited education, a lot of them. And uh, he's been a blessing. And this is what he wrote. Needless to say, this atmosphere facilitated greater stress on both inmates and staff, and great violence was the result too often. Mm -hmm. We can't imagine living in that climate. Mm -hmm. And yet, through it all, nothing was ever as bad as it could have been. Most of the men's spirits were positive more often than not, and by God's amazing grace, depression and pessimism were held at bay. Mm. Boy, that, that touches me. It touches me, too, because mm -hmm. that's my boy. Mm -hmm. And what you just read, he wrote out to us in longhand from the prison. And I know there have been very lonely days and very discouraging mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. for these inmates. It's been so very hard for them. And yet we have to say, Arthlene, as you introduce the program, so many people this year have known financial loss mm -hmm. and they've a lot of people I know have known the loss loss of ministry in person, which is also livelihood. And so they're Absolutely. hurting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people are embarrassed to say, mm -hmm. I need food. I mean, I need to pay my mortgage and mm -hmm. I'm not going around to all these churches where I normally minister. And mm -hmm. so the needs are great. And then I think of just uh, people watching the news and they, yeah. they have gotten so upset with some of the things they see on the news. And then even within families, there are arguments about what is happening in our world today. And it's, it creates uneasiness and fear. Mm -hmm. And that begins to erode people's confidence. And if they don't stay tuned into God's word, and if they mm -hmm. are not in, in touch with him through mm -hmm. prayer, uh, if they're not believing God's promises, uh, they start to fall. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking of uh, wonderful Americans, and nothing like that, American ingenuity and spirit. <clears throat> People have given blood, sweat, and tears practically, and mm -hmm. all their life savings to start a business, mm -hmm. and it's gone. And you think of people, even like my daughter, is a professional harpist. She was traveling Florida with Josh Brogan, and they cut off all the concerts. Mm and none since. Now think about this. You, you might not think about a singer or musician, but think about the ushers. Think about the people who do the lights. Mm -hmm. This thing has hit everybody and we want you to know that we're praying for you mm -hmm. and we care. And I'd like to hear about some of those mm -hmm. things and I'll take them to prayer. When you send a prayer request to me, I take it home and pray mm -hmm. for it. Now, when I first met Carol, how? I don't know how long Jason had been in prison then, but it was it was Still pretty, pretty new, fresh. I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. She wrote a book called When I Lay My Isaac Down, and I certainly recommend it. Now, this has been reprinted with some uh, Study really guide beneficial questions. additions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. There's an extra chapter on perseverance from the first edition of mm -hmm. When I Lay My Isaac Down. And then we have added discussion questions for every chapter. It's the kind of thing people can get together and read, and uh, they can then discuss the questions, or they can do them individually. But it, it would be a shame. Makes you think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it would be such a shame if we went through great sorrow and it was for no benefit. In mm -hmm. my prayer is that through our story that people will find hope. Mm -hmm. And I think if we don't hang on to hope, we have nothing. And Arthlane, your viewers write to me. 
And I want to say thank you for writing to me. Thank you for praying for Jason. And uh, we've just been through a very interesting couple of weeks in our journey with our son. Uh, you can, after you've been incarcerated for five years, you can request the clemency process. Now, in Jason's case, because it was first degree murder, that wouldn't be a get out of jail free card. No. And he's already served, as you mentioned earlier, 21 years. Mm -hmm. So he's been in more than two decades. But you can ask for an eventual end of sentence date, a, a commutation of your sentence to 25, 30, 35, or 40 years. Mm -hmm. And that is what he has requested in this application. Well, the first time he went through that process was. 10 years ago and uh, we we had the devastation of having that rejected after we had collected lots of letters of support and people were so kind and now this time he had to wait five years to apply again and finally his application has reached it to the top so I want to say to your viewers this is a time to pray in the very near, near future, Jean and I will have meetings by Zoom because of the pandemic uh, with members of the aides in the executive offices, mm -hmm. uh, the attorney general's office, the office of the Department of Ag Agriculture, and also the chief financial officer and the governor's office uh, through the people who are advocates for Jason. And we are, we are asking for two things. We're asking for mercy and for God's will to be done. And Jason would be the very first to tell all of us that if, if he can serve God better on the outside than on the inside, he asks for freedom. And if that doesn't happen, he will really? keep serving where he is. God uh, it's bless hard, him. but that, that is where his heart is. And that's a hard thing mm -hmm. to say. So we need prayer for that process. Yes, yeah, so can I ask um, all these viewers write down Jason's name and begin to really pray. And I'm deeply touched that he said, Lord, your will. I, I say, Lord, my will is to get out of here. <laughs> but um, to uh, really leave it with God, where can mm -hmm. I be the most effective? And I'm sure the process is very, very, got a lot of minute mm -hmm. little twists and turns, but the behavior on the inside ought to count for a lot. And he has been a blessing and mm -hmm. helped a lot uh, he's done teaching, mentoring yes. on a number of subjects. And, and one thing they've just started again is the reentry program classes. And Jason is uh, teaching in that program. He has taught over a thousand inmates how to do their finances with the Dave Ramsey mm -hmm. principles and uh, so they'll be able to function on they the They probably outside. had no clue how to handle no finances No clue, yet. which is what got a lot of them into trouble in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, he's taught men how to communicate through the gavel club, which is Toastmasters mm -hmm. on the inside, and then the spiritual mentoring mm -hmm. and encouragement he's been to others. And what was precious to me just two days ago, Arthlane, is that Jason was asked to collect letters of support from fellow inmates that can be turned into the governor and to the cabinet. And when I read through the letters of these men who've been touched by Jason's life, I felt like weeping. Wow. I mean, they just said how much his support has been. And this touched me because, you know, many of your viewers have given to support Speak Up for Hope. Mm -hmm. And in turn, we put money in Jason's account so he can bless others. So many of these letters said, Jason is always generous with us. Praise and he has, he has helped me spiritually. He has helped me with my leadership development. And they have just poured out their hearts about how he has blessed their lives. So this mama is very well aware mm -hmm. of the fact that God has answered her prayers for her son's ministry on the inside. We often no question. Talk, yeah. We often talk about him as our yeah. mission. Missionary. And uh, yes, COVID has hit the prisons too in terms of not only inmates mm -hmm. ill, but, but the fact that Family. it has caused shutdowns of the men being much more restricted on the compound. Uh, for several weeks, their meals were delivered to them and they literally ate their three meals a day on their bunks. So you can imagine how restricted that Talk was. Talk about depressing. Oh, oh, very depressing. And yet you saw even in that yep. piece you read from him, there's hope, there's hope. And 
I know I don't want this program to just be about our family because it's about your family. And Arthleen, you and I have said so many times the viewers write about what they're going through. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes relationships, struggles, and certainly hardships generated mm -hmm. by all that's happened in our world this year. And uh, what do you think is the best way to defeat fear? Well, one way is through what Jesus said about it, that fear not. Um, yes. Absolutely. And there's, there's so many tentacles to this mm -hmm. thing. But the truth is God could meet you yes. at, at that point of need. And uh, there's perhaps viewers you've never tuned in before. And the COVID thing has hit you hard. It's hit you in the pocketbook. It maybe hit your family. Mm -hmm. uh, could even be the place that you have no food, but you can turn to somebody. That's Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who gave his life for you, and he can guide you and direct you and bring you back into a full position of a better life than you mm -hmm. ever had before. The thing about COVID is uh, there's no end. No there's end. no end to the ripples of no. uh, destruction. No, and I'm thinking about some of you who have probably lost loved ones or maybe you've been sick or people you love have been sick or you may not be able to visit your grandparents because they their immune systems are compromised and so there's a loss of fellowship and and physical touching Arthleen, i often think for my son i think the lack of physical touch when we would be able to hug him mm -hmm. at those visits has been something mm -hmm. so so very difficult mm -hmm. and in the past month we've been allowed one hug when we get there and one hug when we left and I'll tell you I I took advantage of that time I grabbed the back of his head <laughs> restricted and I, hugs I hugged that man and I just I felt the back of his head and I could I saw him tear up mm -hmm. because touch is so then, meaningful yes, yes. and I want to say if you're lonely if you're hurting your family's gone through pain. Maybe you are in a marriage that is struggling or you, you just, your spouse has died and you're lonely beyond anything you ever thought you would experience. God loves you and he cares about what's happened to you. And he, he says right, right in your ear, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I won't ever walk away from you. And I love those promises, Earthling. Amen. You know, we've got two or three minutes, and I, I'd like to ask you to pray for our audience. I would love to. Uh, we don't know your specific need, but we know they're all mm -hmm. out there, and there's a lot of different ones. And also, let's, let's pray for our governor. We have a wonderful governor in mm -hmm. Florida. Uh, he's probably the envy of a lot of states, <laughs> uh, Governor DeSantis, and he makes these decisions. Uh, we need to pray for him, but would you just uh, kind of a general prayer because mm -hmm. we don't have all the specifics. Yes, I would love to. Sure. Join me now as we pray. Oh, Father, we come to you with, with our hearts hurting, but our hands open. And we say, Lord, would, would you take these burdens. We ask you to lift them off our shoulders because we, we have faced terrible fear and some yes. have lost loved ones and others are, are really hurting financially. And Lord, some have had relationship struggles because they're homeschooling their kids and they're also trying to juggle their job from home. And, and there are so many people who have gone through drastic change this year. And Father, you are the God to whom nothing is impossible. You are our Savior. You're our Shepherd. You are the altogether lovely one. You're our covenant partner. And Lord, we, we lay our burdens at your feet yes. and we ask you to be the lifter of our heads. Amen. And Lord, I pray that you would meet the financial, the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual needs of every Praise person God. who is watching this program. I pray that even now, these individuals would sense your smile over their life and they would sense your presence as you cover them with your peace. Lord, thank you for, for our precious Arthleen Rippey. Lord, keep her healthy, strengthen her, give her even more vision for the programs that lie ahead. We ask your blessing on this ministry financially and spiritually as people continue to receive hope and help from these programs. Lord, into your hands, we give our needs and we 
thank you that you will answer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's so wonderful that you can go to the Lord in prayer and um, send me your prayer requests. I'll pray for them. But also, you don't have Carol's address. Send, send it to me. Say, so just send this to Carol. <clears throat> I'll see that she gets it. Because both of us want you to know that uh, we're very much aware. We don't know the details are all, but such a variety of hurts mm -hmm. and difficulties. But our God is so much bigger than that. We, we've <laughs> got to let faith come up yes. and ignore fear so much. So it's always great to have you, girl. Oh, I love You're coming, Arkeline. Yeah. Thank you for the privilege. I, I feel like part of the mm -hmm. Homekeepers family. Well, you are. <laughs> There's no question. And remember, when I lay my Isaac down, this, can't tell you how good this book is, but this is a, a reissue of it with all these interesting things that in the back that you look at it, you think about it, you, there's space for you to write down. I can make your Christian life grow in the Lord. And that's what we want to do as long as we're here on earth for sure. So Carol will be back next month and you stay right there. I'll be back in a minute. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, friend, I, I think there are so many different difficulties going on right now as a result of uh, unemployment and COVID and the way everything has been upset, family, schools, churches, and all. And, well, you need the Lord. If you don't have him in your life, you really need him. And I want you to know there are people standing right by right now to pray with you. All you have to do is go to your phone. There'll be someone there. You can express your need. You don't have to tell them anything. You don't have to give them your name or anything. It's just people who want to pray with you. And I've known the Lord for so many decades and it's wonderful. And I've had plenty of trouble, lots of trouble. But this word right here is true when everything else fails, when everything else crumbles. And here's just part of what it says in Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Isn't that great? He is a refuge and a strength, a refuge and a strength, and you do not need to be afraid no matter what you're facing right now. You can turn to him. He will comfort you. He will lead you. He will guide you. Ask him for direction, and he can open doors that no man can shut. He can raise up miracles in your life, and maybe you learned about him when you were in Sunday school and you kind of forgotten and you've gotten away from all that. Now is the time to return to those things because they are true. They are foundational. They will never change. We live in a time right now when everything's changing all the time, every day, but not our God. Please consider that. Go to him, and I hope you'll join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.